Hello, I'm Chai Hoffelenia. Welcome to Rappler. On August 13, an MRT train that crashed into the Taft Avenue station and injured at least 30, 36 passengers caused widespread alarm. Shortly after the accident, the MRT management on its official Twitter account said a technical problem caused the mishap. A week later, an internal probe shows that personnel failed to follow standard safety procedures. <coughs> The train drivers involved in the accident will be charged administratively for gross negligence. Transportation Secretary June Abaya attributes the accident to human error. Abaya says there was poor coordination between the drivers and the managers of the MRT stations. Abaya joins us today to talk about the state of the train transportation system in Metro Manila, what government is doing to prevent a repeat of the mishap, and what <clears throat> lies ahead. Good afternoon, Secretary Abaya. Hi, good afternoon, Chai. Thank, Thank you, you very much for, for coming. Thank you for the invitation. Um, You've been in the news of late, and yesterday we saw you trying to explain how the accident, the, the latest accident happened. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are curious, and I have to ask you this. When was the last time you took public transportation? Public transportation? Um, I did it uh, a few days before I was appointed or a few days after I was appointed. I, I brought along uh, a few of my brothers. So we took all three lines in one, one day. You could actually do it in uh, probably five hours. Mm -hmm. So uh, admittedly, that was my last time. Um, when was this? Probably uh, a few days before October 18, a few days after October 18. Of which year? Of 2012. 2012. Yep. So not lately? No, not lately. But I've, I've committed, I'll, uh, just to show that MRT3 is safe, I'll, I'll find my quiet time to ride MRT3. Um, a lot of... MRT um, riders and commuters say that government does not seem to um, to appreciate what they have <clears> to go through. There are very, very long lines. Um, cars are very packed during peak hours, but not enough action is, is, is being done or government isn't reacting quick enough. Well, not, not really. Um, I, again, I usually would start off, I, I don't uh, give any excuse. Um, at least this time government has exercised political will, even the, at the risk of taking on cases and uh, answering TROs. Mm -hmm. But uh, clearly we, we exercise political will to purchase the new 48 trains and uh, prototype should arrive July uh, or third quarter of next year and hopefully it's going to be a phased delivery. In fact, Dalian is around. I'll be meeting and then Friday we'll We'll firm this up and I could share that to the public and hopefully all 48 trains could be delivered before the end of the term of the president. We are also procuring the signaling system. Um, has has been always described obsolete is also usually the adjective attached to it. So we are currently procuring it. Uh, would take us around six to eight months. Hopefully it will be installed by February of next year. We are upgrading our power supply system because uh, with the 48 additional trains you need to do that a rail system well, we're likewise re re replacing rails mm -hmm. so these are things that should have been done a few years ago but uh, one way or another either government or the private sector owner did not do it so again i don't look back i, I try to solve problems and uh, we'll deliver it so when will commuters feel that substantial changes have been made I, I think when well, it, if it's substantial, then the arrival of the 48 trains that would be really substantial. So by August of next year, uh, August of next year, you'll see one train. What what was explained to me, once you bring in the prototype, they'll test it on the system that it was manufactured up to specs. It runs with the system. It takes a month to clear a uh, train, so that's and September. succeeding then you'll have uh, deliveries of three to four a month. So by the fourth quarter <laughs> of... You're holding me to the last <laughs> yes, day. I but yeah. well, yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'll, uh, let me talk to Dalian first, and I'll yeah. text you uh, by next week, a, a more concrete and uh, stable schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been with the OTC <clears throat> for about two years? Almost. I, I hit my second year, 18 October this year. I guess people will be asking, why, <clears throat> what took you so long? Why, why wait two years? I mean, of course, you said that you don't want to look back, but we have to look back. Um, why it takes so long? Um, well, first of all, I, uh, this MRT3, I, I think the basic setup, the original 
build lease transfer agreement uh, is not your model agreement. In fact, in my project finance class in law school, mm -hmm. where uh, Dean Andy Bautista was my teacher, on the very first day, he described that the worst form of BOT contract that we have is the MRT3 BLT. So, uh, it's a, it's, I, I don't have to go, but e essentially, um, well, as you know, there were discussions of uh, the, the Czech company in... Inecon. So, Inecon, then that has been discussed. We've been very careful. In fact, in the purchase, the procurement of the 48 trains, just because of this lingering uh, story of uh, innuendos of irregularities, I took the initiative of procuring a foreign consultant just mm -hmm. to make sure that the terms of reference are not favoring any particular contractor. So that, that, there's a clear report on that. So it, it is those things that um, causes delay as well. Because um, being a member of a bids and awards committee is not a position sought after by a lot of government officials. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, your, your decisions, your signatures there could mean a, a, congratulation, a congratulatory remark from your secretary or the president, but could actually mean an ombudsman case for you. So mm -hmm. if you ask any government employee, they'd, they'd rather stay away from bids and awards committee yeah. nowadays. Um, <clears throat> I'd just like to understand a bit. Uh, during the time of your predecessor, um, Secretary Mar Rojas, mm -hmm. I think people who are watching the OTC also and, 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 and watching this project noticed that he also took some time. Um, nothing moved under him. Uh, why was that? Uh, well, I, I, I shouldn't, uh, I, I won't agree to that. In, in fact, if I could rattle off what we've done in DOTC, um, I'd say I am just a beneficiary of what my predecessors have done. Like I start starting from Secretary Ping De Jesus, then yeah. Secretary Rojas. Um, not in MRT3, but look at aviation. Mm -hmm. When I was appointed, we had three major stumbling blocks. The significant safety concerns of IKO, the EU ban of the EU, the Category 2 of FAA. Mm -hmm. But now today, we, we would pro probably say, thanks to the men and women, uh, women of CAP, we have addressed all, all three. Um, we have um, awarded or close to, have to award uh, our third PPP, um, a, the Automatic Fair Collection System, mm -hmm. Maktan Cebu, um, LRT1 just about to be awarded, if not uh, TRO'd. Mm -hmm. But in all three cases, government was ready to give a subsidy, meaning based on the calculations of our consultants, yeah. in all likelihood, private sector would need government subsidy. Mm -hmm. But due to the competitive bid of a level playing field and open and transparent, transparent uh, measures that we do, we ended up generating 25 billion pesos now we get a free automatic fare collection system, a free airport in Cebu, and a free rail system to Cavite. Mm -hmm. So never been done before and uh, at no cost to government. Speaking of subsidies, <coughs> um, I know that, well, the, uh, the, the fare rate would be about 15, 15 pesos, uh, if, if, I, if I am correct. Uh, but then that is still subsidized. That is still subsidized by government. Referring to the MRT3? MRT3, yes. Because yes. the, the, the big subsidy of government is the payment of the equity rental payments. That's basically a 15% return on so your So government equity. is essentially not making money from No, if, from if you look at, at the present. whole picture, whole financial picture, we pay uh, more than 500 million pesos a month on the equity rental payments. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we are pushing for the EVBO the equity value buyout. It's a move of government to eventually take on the ownership of MRT3 because probably a lot of your uh, fans wouldn't realize that the facility itself is privately owned. Mm -hmm. So go if, if once government takes over, uh, will that translate into more efficient operations? Because some people would also say, 
we thought that the, the trend should be towards privatization. So why, are, right. why is government now taking over? Well, let me answer your first question. Will it translate to more efficient service? No, there, there will be no change in uh, operations because mm -hmm. currently it is government that operates. It is government technically that maintains because we procure the private sector. Right. What will only change is ownership. What we will prevent are TROs because then there is no party in society who would then come up, oh, you didn't consult us, you didn't get our consent before you, you did. So those are the pains that we want to eliminate by the EVBO. Aside from the fact that we are refinancing the whole thing, because given the, the good economy, money is cheap, uh, credit is cheap, then therefore instead of paying 15%, probably you could pay off at 3 or 4%. So that's mm -hmm. more of a DOF refinancing thing. But Moving forward, as, as regards to privatization, government is acquiring ownership, mm -hmm. but once we acquire it, we will bid out the operations and maintenance because we do believe in the efficiency of private sector and their expertise in using commercial space, uh, revenue generation of the fees and fares. And, and that's a policy we've adopted in um, DOTC. Mm -hmm. the, you, you'll see that in our PPPs for airports, PPPs for toll roads, PPPs for, for rails, and even into ports. Okay, there's a <clears throat> quick question here from, from social media. This is from Christine Saavedra. She asks, how could the OTC prevent a similar accident from occurring in the future? Well, going to the details, our findings were it is human procedural error. If that is a type of uh, finding that you have, then you focus on the the man, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the driver or the people who run the, the system. Yeah. We have to um, enhance training. Uh, currently, they, are, they undergo refresher training once every year. We're doubling that up. We're, uh, and by the way, th these are drivers that have gone through certification and training, not walk-ins who who just uh, could push levers and push a train forward. They've, they've gone to extensive training, but again, um, we're only human, uh, lapses yes. do happen. Um, likewise, we have to review our procedures. Critical in the finding was, why didn't the train driver, the distressed train driver, allow the passengers to debark mm -hmm. when his two last doors were actually inside the Magallanes station? Yeah. The, the procedures um, are quite clear. However, they've been used to that if you are in between stations, you don't debark passengers. If you're in a station, you debark them. So we'll make this clear next time and uh, enhancement of procedures, making check checklists, mm -hmm. uh, requiring them to look at manuals and checklists rather than drawing from memory when you're in that kind of situation will enhance and hopefully minimize and hopefully even prevent a similar occurrence. Do you have a protocol, for example, in, in the event of a, of a disaster, in an earthquake, for example, would drivers know how to conduct themselves and um, shepherd their, their passengers? Honestly, I have to check that. I, I think there would, because um, this is a train system which the Japanese built. Um, I have to check it before I, I'd say uh, we have one. Okay, another question from, from social media. This is from Joy Agustin. She asks, a lot of people ask you to resign, though Malacanang <clears throat> says they, they still trust you. Do you think you should stay and why? Actually, Chai, um, I can go anytime. Um, as I've said, I have a family to take care of. I have three young kids to raise. Serving in government is a real privilege for me, especially under President Aquino. In fact, I... I I'd uh, convince young kids uh, to serve in government and uh, give back. It's a good time to be in government. But uh, again, uh, just like any other privilege, a privilege could be taken away by the appointing authority anytime. And I'd said I, I am not a man into drama, mm -hmm. or, uh, but uh, a simple text or wink from the president that I should go, then I should go. And I'll be forever grateful to him. So he told you to stay? No, he has not. Uh, we haven't gone through that uh, uh, conversation. So I'm just going by, by the announcement of the spokesperson. But f for me, um, I understand command responsibility. I came from the military. Mm -hmm. I also understand the concept of not abandoning your superiors. Because uh, I could, firstly, if I could just walk, I'll just walk away, sir. 
I couldn't stand the heat. My, my wife is uh, <laughs> getting at me. My kids are joking around with me. I just have to go. No, that's also irresponsible for me to, to leave my superior behind. Mm -hmm. um, what's the master plan? Like um, this administration has about two years left. Mm -hmm. um, and the OTC covers a lot of things. Uh, you're, you're responsible for, for many things. And MR, the MRT3 um, project is just, is just one of many. Uh -huh. um, what do you want to be um, to, to complete in, in the two years that's left? Well, well, for me, from the very start, I've, I've always been asked, what are your priorities? I, I've refused to answer that question because I think everything is a priority. I couldn't say rail should be prioritized over maritime because mm -hmm. everything has to be addressed. I just see it as a pipeline. If you talk about the PP project, they're, they're in the pipeline. I'm, we're slowing, pushing, slowly pushing them out. I, I see some still at the start of the pipeline. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you really want to look long term, talk about the new gateway. This, this is a, an airport that probably we'll see in 2025. Mm -hmm. But given the rule of thumb that uh, gateways like this, and we as Filipinos, uh, the way you also move and decide, probably this will take 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. But I think it's in incumbent upon me to make it easier for the people who follow after us that we start planning on this. Because I'm sure if we don't, the guys who would replace will take another three years before they figure out what they're going to do. And basically half of their term would be gone. So we, we need to plan things well. We have a master plan for our airports in, in rail system. The way to go is to migrate people from private cars to mass rail system. So we see an LRT1 project to Cavite, an LRT2 extension to Antipolo, which we hope to also extend to the port area. Mm -hmm. We have MRT3, um, eventually being bought and O&M being privatized. MRT-7 is about to start. We have issued, the DOF has issued the performance undertaking. Mm -hmm. DOTC has signed the uh, implementing guidelines. This would be a rail system starting from North EDSA, yeah. which will go to Commonwealth, to Batasan, to Fairview, to San Jose del Monte, basically serving your northeastern Metro Manila. Mm -hmm. We are likewise pushing for BRTs. We have a, it's a bus rapid transit system. Yeah. Cebu BRT has been approved by NEDA. Mm -hmm. So now you see a mass rail outside of Luzon. Um, Manila BRT, which will run through Quezon Avenue. Uh, we're about to go up to NEDA. So basically moving around the metropolis, it, it's that, uh, that philosophy that we're trying to push. In fact, if you, if I'd, I'd often cite a rail expert that the true, the true test of a developed country is not when you're poor get to ride the mass transit system, but if it's your rich, it's rich people who get to ride the, the mass transit system. That's so, the true test. So of can we foresee an integration of, of these systems? Because like, if you look at the LRT, for example, it's disconnected <clears throat> from, from the MRT. You have to get down and then um, go another flight of stairs to connect to the, the, uh, the next system. Um, and, and people wonder, why can't they be connected? Why can't they be connected to the airport? Why can't we take the train from the airport to into the city, for example? Well, just on LRT1 MRT3, that leads us to another controversial project. It's a common station because uh, we've decided to put it in, in Trinoma. Uh, of course, yes. the other parties see it a different way. Hopefully, we'll come to a resolution soon. But that clearly brings together and makes more convenient a transfer from LRT1 to MRT3. Mm -hmm. Key is interconnectivity. So there, um, admittedly, the, the interconnectivity of the rails aren't as uh, smooth and as convenient, but they are interconnected. You just have to go a few flights of stairs or take an elevator or pass through a mall. But uh, in, indeed, key is interconnectivity. And, Likewise, if uh, one of our projects in, in the PPP pro program is the ITS, the Integrated Transport System. These are ter bus terminal malls, yeah. uh, wherein we will prevent provincial buses from entering Metro Manila. There will be three of th these. Um, we are about to open up the bids for the Southwest Terminal, that's on Coastal Road, addressing the 
buses coming from buses and PUVs coming from Cavite. Uh, the FTI ITS to address the buses coming from the south, even as far as uh, Mindanao and Visayas. We still have to figure out where our ITS north will be. But the uh, key here is to keep the buses out. And when the passengers go down, it will be intermodal, so next to rail. Mm -hmm. So such that when you get off the bus, walk to the, inter, the terminal mall, and a rail uh, system is ready for you to take you into the city. When will all this happen? Um, the southwest and the south, I'm, I'm quite sure the construction period is two years. So we, we see that just around the corner, if the uh, corner is two years away. The, mm -hmm. the, we'll try to get the north terminal up and going. Uh, we're just having problems on locating a, a, an ideal or a good site for it. Mm -hmm. There have been observations put across. Let me just go back a bit to um, the MRT3 um, trains. Um, they said that some, those who have been following um, the issue were saying that um, the reason why there was slow movement there was because of politics. Um, I think um, from the private sector, uh, you had um, businessmen like Sobre Pena and um, um, MVP and Mr. Ong Pin involved and that created a bit of distrust so that there was a, a <clears throat> hesitation to get into a partnership with them. Was that a factor uh, in, in... No, when, when, uh, when things were downloaded to me by Secretary Mar, mm -hmm. there was no angle, there was no download on politics, no angle on distrust. Mm -hmm. um, we, I, I merely took it as, if you were referring to the MVP proposal yes. for a <coughs> unsolic unsolicited proposal to take over the expansion and operations, um, I, I merely took it as a business proposal. Mm -hmm. um, calculations were made and at the end of the day, it was seen that uh, it would really, wouldn't really benefit um, government and the people because basically it extends the concession for another uh, I think another 15 or 10 years, basically having a fresh 25, the fares will be hiked. Uh, to how much? I, I couldn't recall, but uh, that's, that's the way how you get around and eventually get a return. Yes. So that's something that um, you should figure a good mechanism because even now the MRT LRT fare, which has been in discussions since I was still in Congress in the 2011 budget still has not been imposed or implemented. Mm -hmm. So no, no politics, no distrust. Uh, things were evaluated according to, to merit. So no, no, no truth to that. Uh, but there were legal issues that, are, um, that were involved here. And this is the reason why you, uh, you delayed or had problems in, in um, purchasing new trains. Um, no, it was more of that controversy of uh, the checks and Inicon and uh, white papers that saying it was uh, favoring certain uh, set certain parties. That was the only reason. This this is during my time. Yes. But my predecessors, because if you go back to two thousand and and four, there were already communications between DOTC and MRTC. Mm -hmm. that we needed trains because mm -hmm. we were about to hit the capacity. But uh, amazingly, it takes you 10 years till, till I got in or till we got in when a decision has been made. No, uh, we, we can't uh, horse around anymore. The, the lines are, are obvious, but uh, amazingly, I still got a TRO on that. But good thing an, an enlightened judge allowed us to proceed. Mm -hmm. You said that we're playing catch up. Mm -hmm. um, the population is growing, we're at 100 million, um, and then we're, we have to purchase all these trains and we don't have that much resources and we're subsidizing um, fares. Uh, is there enough, um, will, how much time do, will we need to be, to be, uh, to be at par with, with uh, and, and to catch um, and to match the needs of, of commuters? Um, well, I wouldn't know. Um, we, um, I'm trying to do what are the obvious things. Um, LRT1, LRT2, MRT3, airports, uh, uh, ports, uh, addressing traffic, addressing franchises. Um, I, I don't think anyone could determine and 
even the experts, transportation experts of, of this world could tell you, oh, definitely by uh, 2040, we will be like Singapore or Hong Kong. Uh, obviously, transportation projects are also dependent on the economy, the uh, amount of resources uh, decided upon by decision makers that you allot for, tra for infrastructure. But clearly, um, this administration, till we get to 2016, has committed that we will uh, ramp up infrastructure spending from, I think, 2.5% of GDP <coughs> in 2013. That is now 3% in 2014, 4% uh, in 2015, and by 2016, 5% of our GDP will devote, be, be devoted in uh, transportation uh, infrastructure. Okay, just the last question, I guess. Um, by 2016, this administration completes its term. Um, what do you want? What do you want to see uh, it, as, as probably your legacy? What would you want to leave behind at the OTC? Um, I'm not into legacies. I just want to do what is ex expected of me. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, um, if I assess the situation, I am fighting fires, uh, finding solutions to, to problems. I did not be, be remembered. I, I just want to put in my, my share, and I think there are a lot of things to do. What a responsible secretary should do is prepare things well, get master plans uh, ready, such that the guys who would replace us uh, will be convinced that there was no agenda here, there was no politics here. It was really plan for the needs of the people such that when they take over and fill in the shoes, um, they'll, they'll hit the ground running. And in that way, this catch-up game wouldn't be further delayed, or at least they'll be starting off at a, spa as, as a faster speed than, than we started off. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we've been talking to Transportation Secretary June Abaya about what is said to be the worst MRT accident in the country so far and the <coughs> state of the railway system in the metro. In, in the metro. I'm Chai Hofelenia. Thank you for watching.